إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار One of the advices I always give to anyone who's going to Palestine to visit, to pray in Masjid Al-Aqsa is do not go as a tourist. Don't go with the idea of seeing all the sites and checking off the boxes like many do but rather mingle with the people, spend time with the people, talk to the people. And I find that, in my experiences, that's the life-changing part about visiting Al-Quds, is interacting with the people. Because you see from them things that you may not have seen your whole life, you only read about in books, in books of the past, in the lives of the Sahaba, and in the Quran, and the examples of the Anbiya before us. You literally get to experience, get to see, get to meet people walking in those shoes. If you go out, if you're at Masjid Al-Aqsa and you're leaving the Masjid to your left, there's different gates to enter the compound. One of them is called Bab al-Silsila, the chain gate. And if you go out that gate and you go out about 50 yards, you'll find a small cafe shop on your right. Khan Abu Khadija. It's the cafe of a man by the name of Abu Khadija. And when we went to visit him with our group, he welcomed us and he said, welcome home, welcome to your home. And when I say don't go like a tourist, that's part of that meaning. The people of Palestine again and again will tell you this is your home. He said that when I see you, I feel like I'm seeing my family. And he began to tell us his story his shop was owned by his father who passed away, rahimahullah. 
But beneath his shop are some tunnels. And so the Israeli government wants that shop. And besides, of course, exerting pressure on him and harassing him and the like and putting fines and fees and things that are very difficult to pay when all you're allowed to sell is coffee and tea, he's applied for a permit to sell food and he's still not been granted that for seven years. They've offered him five million, 10 million, they kept going up until it became 30 plus million. And not just 30 plus million, it's a check for 30 plus million, plus a passport to whichever country you wanna go. A free ticket out of this hell that we're putting you through to live wherever you want as a king. And the final offer actually was a blank check, you name the price. And you know what he told us as Tears were literally forming in his eyes. He said, my father, before he died, he told me, this land is not yours, so you can't sell it. How do you sell what does not belong to you? He said, this land belongs to the Muslim Ummah. And so he says, I cannot sell it no matter what they offer me and no matter what I go through on an individual day-to-day -day basement of harassment and the like, I cannot sell this because this, this shop, it belongs to all of you, the Muslim Ummah. And when you meet him, your mind just can't go and think to the companions. So Haybar Rumi, a Roman companion who converted to Islam and he, became, he came into Mecca as a very poor person, but he became successful in business. But of course the Quraysh didn't let him make hijrah. And so he finally was able to sneak out and set out in hijrah and doing so they, they discovered and they chased him down and they, 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 they stopped him. He, they said, you came to us as a poor person, now you're leaving with all your wealth. No, it's not gonna work like that. So he said, fine. How about I tell you where all my wealth is? You can take it. And they said, okay, fine, that's a deal. We'll take your money, we'll let you go. And so he told them where his wealth was. And he proceeded to Medina with just the horse that he was on and whatever he had from his belongings. And all the wealth, a lifetime of accumulation of business that he spent in Mecca within the blink of an eye, within the word of a, within the statement of a, within, within the blink of an eye, within the time it takes to utter a statement, all of it was gone. And when he reached the Messenger of Allah وسلم, in Quba, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, greets him by saying, Ya Aba Yahya Rabi Hal Bayya. Ya Aba Yahya Rabi Hal Bayya. Ya Aba Yahya Rabi Hal Bayya. Oh Abu Yahya, what a beautiful transaction you did. You've succeeded in that. You've never done a better business transaction than that. And no one preceded Suhaib to the Messenger of Allah, but Allah inspired the Messenger of Allah what Suhaib did, and Allah revealed a verse about him until this recited till the Day of Judgment. And amongst the people are those who sell themselves seeking the pleasure of Allah. They'll give up everything they have. So when you meet Abu Khadija, you think, SubhanAllah, I'm meeting someone from the Sahaba. I took I rode with someone to the neighborhood of Sheikh Jarrah. Perhaps many of you have heard about it, it's been in the media prior to this new escalation. And I sat with a, a man who owns a home. And in his home, his family expanded, his children got married and had kids and the like, and so he, ex he built, he expanded his house. He has a small piece of land, but he expanded the house. And of course, they gave him the demolition order, this is not allowed, you have to demolish your house. Now demolitions, it's not just, you can't just refuse, because if you refuse, you'll be thrown in jail. But not just that, either you do it yourself or you pay the Israeli government to do it for you. The cost of the bulldozer and the construction crew to destroy your house, you have to pay for it. And so the day came for them to destroy his house, but they actually stopped the demolition crew. And instead they said, you know what, this new expansion that you built for your children and your grandchildren, it's no longer yours. And they put in a settler, a squatter, if you want to call it in our terms, to live in that, in his home instead. So when I walked into his home, I didn't, we stayed on the outside of his home. When I walked into his plot of land, his driveway, you know what was on the driveway? Was a huge bookshelf that was broken into pieces, smashed into pieces. Wood all over the place, huge branches from trees, thrown in debris and the like, filling up his driveway. And we sat and he told us his story. 
And as I'm sitting there and I'm seeing this, taking it in, what's happening, and he has the most vile settler living in his property, blasting the music and harassing him and throwing on his driveway all these things. Again, the mind goes to the seat of the Prophet Sallallahu Um Jameen, the wife of Abu Lahab, what does Allah say about her in the Quran? Why was she doomed to hellfire to carry the wood that will burn them both? She used to throw thorns and spikes and harmful things in the path of the Messenger of Allah when he would leave his house. But how can you be patient? How can you live like that every single day? For years. There is something there that gives them strength that, that the rest of the world doesn't have. There's a level of Iman. There's a level of Yaqeen. There's a, level, there's a level of hope and tawakkul in the promise of Allah that is missing from much of the world. That's missing, missing from myself. But it's a faith that the Messenger of Allah lived by. He went through the same thing. And he persevered. And so his example is example of the Messenger of Allah. So he persevered. The brother who drove me there, he walks, he has a permanent disability. He walks with a limp. And when, when I, was, I asked him what happened, he told me that he's been arrested many times. It's rare you find a Palestinian family except that someone from their family, be it their child, their cousin, their brother, their mother, their father, has been imprisoned. It's a very common thing. Every family you meet, there'll be someone. And he's no different. But he said, I walk with this disability now because I was tortured. And then he shows me a video on his phone. He takes out his phone and he shows me a school that children have to walk through checkpoints and teachers have to walk through checkpoints to get through. And the day before one of the teachers at the school's wedding, the day before her wedding, the forces came to arrest her. They came to arrest her. And this is, again, a common practice. And so there's people there and, you know, there's, you know, back and forth kind of videos like similar to what you see. And then all of a sudden, I see this, the driver get thrown across the screen. He's showing me the video. He has his limp, but he gets thrown across the screen and he gets, he's thrown to the ground and he falls down. And then he's pointing and he has a huge smile on his face and he's saying, that's me, that's me. He's in his 50s or late, maybe early 60s. But I was shocked because you feel like as a man you're defeated. You're thrown down while defending your sister. Trampled upon and sat upon and beaten. But he, he smiled. Allah, he'll never forget that. He smiled and he said, that's me. And I, again, the mind, where do they get this from? Where does this faith come from? And you just look in the Quran. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the wife of Fir'aun, when she believed in Musa alayhi salam, and Musa, Fir'aun goes to his, mana, his, his advisors and he says, he says, what do you know of Asiya bint Muzaham? And they, they began praising her. And he said, إِنَّهَا تَعْبُدُ رَبًّا غَيْرِي But she worships someone besides me. So they advised him, then kill her. So they brought Asiya, radiallahu anha wa alayhi salam, and they pegged her into the ground under the sun. They pegged her arms and her feet into the ground and they began torturing her under the sun and they took this huge boulder and they threw it over to crush her body forever. To crush her body, rubble falling on top of them and to, to split the body into pieces. We've seen these videos. And at that moment she makes a duha. وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا امْرَأَةَ فِرْعَوْنَ إِذْ قَالَتْ رَبِّ بِنِ لِي عِنْدَكَ بَيْتًا فِي الْجَنَّةِ رَبِّ بِنِ لِي عِنْدَكَ بَيْتًا فِي الْجَنَّةِ وَنَجِّنِي مِنْ فِرْعَوْنَ وَعَمَلِهِ she says, Oh my Lord, I beg of you, I ask you to build for me a home in paradise, but not just a home in paradise. Oh Allah, I beg to, ask, to, to, to build for me a home next to you in paradise. So Allah saved her. Allah took her soul before the, the rock crushed her. But, but while she was still alive, 
and they're torturing her, she begins laughing. She begins smiling and laughing until the advisors said, we are, How crazy is this woman? We're torturing her and she's laughing. You know why she was laughing? Because Allah allowed her to see her home in paradise before she went to paradise. How does this man laugh and smile as he's being beaten? And he keeps going back to any protest, anything, any site of action. He is there with his disability. And he is thrown to the floor again. And many of you probably have seen him on the videos because I've seen him on the videos. I recognize him. But what is in their heart? What love of Allah? What faith in their heart is there that will allow them to do that and, and literally give us living examples of the people of the past? And these are just people I met in a three, four day trip. Then of course we see the videos from Gaza. The child who's severely burned to the face and his body, and right next to him is his father. And his father also has burns, but the more severe of the two is the child. But yet it's the child who's telling the father, oh my father, be strong. Oh my father, be strong. I mean, I have an imam. Where does this faith come from? And then you open the Quran and you read the story of Ibrahim السلام, when Allah told him to slaughter his son Ismail. Who is giving who strength? Ismail turns to the Khalil of Allah, his father, and he says, Ya abati ma tu'mar satajiduni insha'Allahu min as Oh my father, do what you're commanded, you'll find me to be amongst the patients. Ismail, the son, is giving the father strength. When we see this, the, the mother crying over her lost children, and she's saying, Oh Allah, every one of my children are in ransom for you, O oh Allah, are in ransom for Masjid al-Aqsa. And we read the story of Sumay Sumaira al-Ansariyah, the woman from the Ansar on the return of the Battle of Uhud when the Messenger of Allah is coming back and the companions are coming back. And the rumor had spread that the Messenger of Allah was killed, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so she comes rushing out of Medina and she sees, Ma fa'ala Rasulullah, Ma fa'ala Rasulullah. And they tell her, Ya um Fulana, your brother was killed. And she says, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Ma fa'ala Rasulullah. What happened to the Messenger of Allah? Oh, so and so, your father was killed, was martyred. What happened to the Messenger of Allah? Your husband was killed. What happened to the Prophet of Allah? They said, He's okay. Then she said, No, 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 I will not rest until you let me see him. And after she saw him, she says, O Messenger of Allah, Kullu musibatin jalal. O Messenger of Allah, any affliction or calamity after. Knowing that you're okay is easy. What was it? The love that she had in her heart for Allah and His Messenger superseded the love of any worldly thing. And when you see a mother crying over her child, but saying, Hasbun Allahu wa ni'mal wakil, know that the love of her, it's in, that's in her heart super, of Allah supersedes the love of anything in this world. We just have to open our eyes and see. There's so many stories from the companions that you see manifest in the lives of the of these, ch of these children and, 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 and people in Gaza. I mean, last thing, there's so many examples, but for last one, for sake of time. The children who are writing their names on their limbs so that they'll be recognized after they are martyred. We've all seen it. And physicians are identifying these children and recognizing who they are by their, by their names. We think of the story of Anas ibn who in the Battle of Uhud. When the rumor went around, the Prophet passed away and people left the battlefield, some sat down. Then he met Sa'd ibn Mu'adh and he says, Oh Sa'd, he says, he says, where, what's going on? Where are you going? Where are you going? He says, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِي إِنِّي لَأَجِدُ رِيحَ الْجَنَّةِ مِنْ دُونِ أُحُدْ Oh Sa'd, I can literally smell the fragrance of paradise around Uhud. And then he went forth and he bowed and Sa'd ibn Mu'adh. One of the ten promised paradise, one of the greatest companions, the one who the throne of Allah shook at his death. He said that, O Messenger of Allah, I could not do what Anas did on that day. And he fought bravely until he died. But again, his body was mutilated. 
until it was beyond recognition, just like the children in Gaza, beyond recognition. And you know what? His sister found his body, and you know how she recognized him? By a mark on his fingertip. There was nothing left of him, over 80 wounds. But perhaps there are things, brothers and sisters, that Allah puts in the hearts of the believers that we don't see. The, the apparent that we see is a, is a level of hopelessness and incapability. There's nothing we can do. But what's beyond the veil, what's beyond the apparent is the nasr of Allah, the, ta the, the taqeed of Allah, the tathbeet of Allah. Allah is giving them strength and giving them mercy. And, and see, we like to define mercy with one color. We, we think mercy is this and we put it in a box. But the mercy of Allah is far beyond our imagination. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu he said in a hadith, he said, يَوَدُّ أَهْلُ الْعَافِيَةِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَ حِينَ يُعْطَى أَهْلُ الْبَلَاءِ الثَّوَابِ The people that weren't tested in this world, on the Day of Judgment, when they see the people who were tested on the Day of Judgment, the amount of reward they got, he says, لَوْ أَنَّ جُلُودَهُمْ كَانَتْ قُرِضَتْ فِي الدُّنْيَا بِالْمَقَارِيضِ They would wish that they, perhaps their bodies would have been cut up with scissors so that they could have the reward that they have. We see something, but perhaps we're missing something else. وَأَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَالصَّفْرَ رَضِي وَلَكَمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُهُ إِنَّهُ وَالْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. We see from the people of Quds and the people of Gaza lessons and reminders that should awaken the heart. Should revive the soul. Their hearts are prepared. Their hearts are ready. And the question we have to ask ourselves is have we prepared our hearts, our deeds, our belief? You know, the Messenger of Allah it was narrated that one night he woke up and he, he says, He says, Wake up my wives. Make up, wake up the women who are sleeping. He says, Why? Because ما أنزل الليل من الفتن. What fitan had uh, have come down tonight? Meaning, they have to worship Allah in the night. What have we done to prepare our hearts? In the Uhud that we just re re referred, in the story of, Abu, uh, of Anas ibn al-Nadr, and the woman from the Ansar, why did the people turn away who turned away? When the rumor went around, some, turned, some of the Sahaba turned away. Allah tells us in the Quran, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَوَلَّوْا مِنْكُمْ يَوْمَ الْتَقَى الْجَمْعَانِ إِنَّمَا اسْتَزَلَّهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ بِبَعْضِ مَا كَسَبُوا They slipped at that moment of difficulty because of something that they had earned from before. Are we preparing our hearts, brothers and sisters? The fitan are here. And the, example, the living examples of the righteous before us are playing out in front of our eyes on our phones and on our screens. Are we taking lesson? Are we learning? Are we changing our life? Are we trying to become better? Ibn al-Qayyim, he says that, you know, sins, sins weaken the body and the heart, not just the heart. We know that sins affect the heart, but they weaken the body. Why? Because the believer's strength in their body comes from their hearts. And if you have a strong heart, if you're firm, then the strength in the body comes. And he says that's why you see those from the Romans and the Persians who fell despite having superior power because their hearts abandoned them at the time of need. May Allah keep our hearts firm so that they, they are available to us at our time of need. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send in peace his blessing upon the Prophet وسلم, and to keep our hearts firm in the moments of fitan. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama salli ta'ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barak ta'ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim fil alameen inna ka hamidun majid. Allahumma inna nasaluka bi anna ka anta Allah la ilaha illa ant la abarra bina mink wa la arafa bina mink wa la arhama bina mink wa la akrama bina mink. Allahumma ya man ala al-arsh istawa ya man khalaqa fasawa wa qaddara fahada wa a'ta kulla shayin إن خلقه ثم هدى اللهم أنت الحي الذي لا يموت والقيوم الذي لا ينام جل ثناؤك وعظم سلطانك تبارك اسمك وتعالى جدك ولا إله غيرك ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بك اللهم يا أرحم الراحمين يا ناصر الضعفاء والفقراء والمساكين يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم كن مع إخواننا في فلسطين اللهم كن معهم في, في غزة وفي كل مكان يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنهم ضعفاء فقويهم خوفا فأمنهم جياعا فأطعمهم عريا فاكسهم حفاة فاحملهم مظلومون فانصرهم محتاجون إليك يا قوي يا عزيز 
اللهم احفظهم من بين ايديهم ومن خلفهم وعن ايمانهم وعن شمائلهم ومن فوقهم يا ذا الجلال والاكرام اللهم كلهم عونا ونصيرا اللهم كلهم عونا ونصيرا اللهم كلهم عونا ونصيرا عباد الله ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون واقيموا الصلاه